Okay. Call this meeting to order. I'm going to ask everyone to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of silence for September 11th. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And at this point, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence for the 2,977 victims of the September 11th and the 6,000 plus who were injured. Thank you. Nice Thank you. Okay. Review and approve the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Is there a second to approve the agenda? Buddy. <laughs> Albert. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 And now to review and approve the minutes of the August 28th regular select board meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Open public comment. See anybody? Oh. Open public comment. John, do you have anything? Yes. Okay. I asked this board a lot of questions, and you said every time I ask them, we'll look into it. Well, I ain't heard from nothing. All the questions I asked the board, I ain't heard nothing back from you. And I'd like to know why. I am a taxpayer of this town, and a probably a high taxpayer. Okay. I believe we answered your question from two meetings ago. I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. what it was, right. and it was... Um, you had asked about the, I think, the loader. Yeah. That one. There was nobody asked. answered. Yes, she we, did. We I answered it. The last meeting. Yeah, yeah um, she did. Yes. Yes. It's yes, she did. The salt shed, and you, you hollered about that. I said, it's probably out of the salt shed, and that was all I said. No, I told no. you it was kept down there. They, they had brought it down to do another job because of some other piece of equipment that wasn't working, so they had to use that. So yes. we answered that. The other one I believe. On a pickup truck. Yeah, and I answered that. And a lot of these pieces that aren't working or in bad repair are going out to um, auction. They're going to auction them off and use the funds to purchase other equipment down the road. Um, the others were potholes, which the guys have been trying to get to it. They've been working a lot on West Street, filling in that um, sides of the road there. They patched a pothole on William Street, huh? Yeah. Well, we got potholes up in Channel Park suspension in Channel Park. There's potholes yeah. everywhere. Well, it should have been taken care of two years ago, and it had it. And you were chairman of the board at that time. So I'm just saying, this has been going on for a long time, and it should not be going on. Well, I, watched you a, have I watched a girl yesterday fall and hit a pothole on her bike, and I was I couldn't get over it. You think more of the lawn do you just do safety of the roads. I noticed that. Well, John, they do have an extensive list, which I get every day. I meet with them. Prior to that, I think Michael met with them. They have a list of, you know, if you're going around and don't see them feeling potholes, they're doing something else. And there are other things that are a little bit more priority that you're probably not even aware of. So they are doing things. And they're checking in with me constantly. They're making me a list of everything they're accomplishing. And they, they've done a lot just for me in the last three weeks. Everything I've asked for them, basically. Okay, so we give it, can we fix the signs of the triangle? The so the, the signs in the triangle, that was answered too. They're yeah, angled that so that trucks can see them. Well, as they're you, going. Don't, you don't have to have an angle like this. You can hang them like this. I mean, coming into Crockett, you can see one of them is like this. Okay. You've got to tilt your head. That's the pride and joy of Crockett, the triangle in front of the library. Okay. I mean, that's, they, they go by that every day, probably four or five times a day. They ought to be able to see that. <coughs> okay. I mean, really, honest to God, that's the pride and joy of Proctor. There's a marble bridge in the library, and you come in Proctor and see a sign. It's like this. Okay. Is there There's anything? a lot of signs. And I'll tell you one, another one is what John Lafon's uh, shop. There's a sign that is wired tied to the telephone wall. The stop sign on Holden Avenue. 
And John LaFont told me that he had to put it up because the town crew can't put it. It, it was in the ground and somebody hit it and he said, John said, I put it up. Okay. Oh, come on, what am I missing here? Oh, John. We so can all that's all I'm going to say, all okay. right? And I've been going through some of the stuff and I'm, I'm surprised what I'm seeing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other open public comment? Um, on September 30th from 11 to 3, we're having the Fall Festival in the park. It would be pretty awesome if I do say so myself. Um, because there's a good crew, a couple of them sitting at your table that are getting that together. We've got um, music all day, we've got a hula hoop program, uh, program. Tom Joyce is coming to do a magic show. We're going to have goats to pet, uh, bounce house, of course the fireman's barbecue, and 20 plus vendors um, in addition to the school with their um, booths also. So come out, it's a free event. Um, lots of free activities, pumpkin decorating. We're also having a baking contest, which um, you have to provide a recipe and um, you need to have cheddar cheese somehow in your, con in your <laughs> dish. And uh, so that'll be taking place also with top three prizes. So uh, it'll be a fun day. It's a great time in Proctor and it's a nice way to highlight the town. And pony rides. And pony rides, yeah. I'm trying to like... Ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> and I will, I will say the classes have been very excited getting together their stuff. So yeah, they we've are, got some good stuff this year too. They're raring to go. That's great. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right, did everybody get a chance to sign the orders and review the bills? Yes. Next up, the Vermont Community Development Program Select Board Approval of MP1. Yes, so we're going through, we had a call um, last week on the um, grant for the Marvel Museum building. And so they kind of gave us a laundry list of everything that's upcoming and what we need to do next. And this document was one of them that we had to have signed and approved by the select board. So I, I know it's pretty extensive, it's very thorough, but it's part of the grant process um, in a lot of grants. So um, I just want everybody to take a look at it and then we just need to sign off on it. So that's gonna be added. Um, the other item that we had to do was provide a certificate of insurance from the, for the town, which we've done that too, we've uploaded that. And then the budget piece is, um, Travis and I had met on that, so that's gonna be uploaded as well, so. Okay. So do we need a motion on that? Yeah, I guess okay. it, if we could have a motion to um, approve the MP1 and sign off on that. So is there a motion to approve the MP1 for the Vermont Community Development Program Grant? Motion. We have a motion second. second. All those in favor say aye. Can, can aye. I have some discussion just before we? Oh, sure. Start? I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I was just wondering because there was it appeared several times about uh, establish a formal written policy. The municipality is supposed to establish a formal written policy. Does that have to be in place before we sign this, or that is something that can be done post signing? You take like on page seven, the next to the last page. Right. It talks about texting while driving, violence against women act. Right. You know that first sentence where it says a establish a formal written policy. Right. So a lot of it can be if we don't have it included, it's something that we can do on the back end. So we can do it. Okay. Going so forward. we can sign this yes. and then do that. Right. Afterwards. So okay. by signing off on this, you're saying some of these might exist, but also there might be something that we have to do and put to put in place, but it can be after the fact. So you would look to see if we have a right. policy, Correct. if not, yep. okay. I'm just going to pass this one out so we can sign Is there any other questions or comments? If not, there's a motion on the table and seconded to approve the um, application. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And I will uh, send this around for everybody to be able to sign. I'll do that after we're... Thank you. Actually, I'll just sit down to you guys. And I'll last. Okay. Uh, stormwater master plan community meeting date. So we, they have gotten in touch with us and this was something, I don't know if you guys remember when this first came out, the plan, they get, we had a meeting on it then, the community meeting, and then they provided an assessment and plan. So now we have to have another community meeting now that they've kind of done that assessment and gotten everything together and it has to be in front of the public. And then they've compiled a survey which will be after the meeting. Um, they'll have it online and it can only be done online. So 
for the community members so they they're coming somebody from the watershed so that they can answer any questions regarding the storm water plan. so i just want to let you know so we are looking at september 28th of this year 6 p.m at the library it's a thursday okay any questions or comments about that what time again 6, 6 p.m <laughs> If there are none, let's, we can move on to West Street Fire Damage Cleanup Update. Okay, so I've gotten after them again because the state and NeighborWorks both got back to me and said that they could not locate the prior asbestos report on the house. Um, it was 28 years ago, so it's quite a while ago. So I've reached out to them and say that we are going to issue the health order to have a cleanup um, if they don't comply with that. So I talked to Brittany Kabakis and she is still working with them and we'll compile everything. She said they're getting the report, they're contacting someone to have it done, and then I said I'd like the cleanup done by November 15th. So I'm gonna follow up with her again this week because I feel like she's not gonna get anywhere if she just checks with neighborhoods again. So, but they just have to, I just, you know, it's, it's such an eyesore, and you know, we, they had somebody willing to clean it up and stuff, and so, I'd like to get cleaned up for winter because it's just going to be even worse. I don't think it could be any worse, but... Okay. Any questions on that? All right. Dump day. So, um, just checking in to make sure everybody's on board still with dump day on October 7th. Still plan on having that because last time we, I wanted to post it early enough so people could get like the permits for a dump day. Um, ahead of time. So, do we ever decide what the charge would be or if we were going to charge? Did we do this in the spring too? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, I was going to say, sounds like we just did this. Well, we haven't, we, like, when we get recertified with the, um, for that, for the dump, we basically have it in our budget to open it two days a year. So, they pretty much kind of hold us to that. So, I said sometimes we can't just, like during COVID, you know, or circumstances right. where it's un. If we don't use it, they're going to force us to close it, and yeah. that would be very no, expensive. Yes, no, yeah. can't afford to no. do that. And plus, there would, I don't think we would ever get another permit to open a transfer oh, no. station. No, no. no. And we just, when I got on board, was we had to get it recertified, so we just did all that. So that's done. So they're right. good with everything they said. So I think we had discussed after the last dump day a limit to. You know, not bringing an entire trailer full of, of stuff, right. um, and I think that was the only thing. It was like by the, it was one truckload, and then after that, you would have to pay um, for additional dollars, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Is it five dollars up front for one? Or yeah. Eight? And then get the stickers in at the town office. Yep. <coughs> and that seemed to work really well the last two days. So. So no more than two times though. Right? Does that yeah. work for everybody? Wasn't there one party that came like three times with just... Right. I think so. Like three with trailers. With a trailer or yeah, something. Yeah. So can you just say again what you're doing? Because <laughs> it's a little... <laughs> so, <laughs> sticker $5 at the town office yeah. for one trip, which would be one truck load, one standard truck load? pickup truck load. And then an additional load. Twenty dollars. We said twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. And the max was two. Times. And the max was two. And I don't believe we were going to take tires or white goods. Were we? we can't take white goods. We can't take tires. Um, Recyclable. We take like hard yard waste. Stuff. Yeah. And if you could contact Rutland County Solid Waste because they'll do hazardous waste disposal. Yeah. At the same time, that works. Yeah, yeah, that is nice. Does anybody have anything to add to that? Covered. And hours. Oh, what were the hours last time? Twelve to twelve thirty. <laughs> That'll be quick for two months. Slightly bigger window. It was. It wasn't very long, was it? Last time I. 
No, was and it we've nine been, to noon? Or? We've been doing it earlier rather than later because a lot of the feedback was people wanted to just get it done and get it over. Like eight to noon? Is that too long? I think eight to noon sounds fine. I think so. I think that sounds okay. It's all kind of Six to ten. <laughs> Midnight to six a.m. Yeah. Ben, can somebody look up see if there's money set aside for that landfill? What do you mean, Don? Tom? John? Sorry. Because, number one, it does not have a line in it. So if something happens, the town's responsible. So I thought when I was on the board, there was some money set aside in case that happens. For what? So if you could do that for me, Ben. John, for a lot, I'm just want to clarify what you asked. Because I don't have that. John, are you going to answer a question or? On what? Okay. So he's asking if there's money set aside in case the landfill leaks that oh. was buried years ago. They're in a bin. They're in the bin. No, no, no. He's talking about the old dump where when they when it used to be dumped directly. Right. Into the. Dump. No, I don't believe there was ever any. No, I don't think so either. We can certainly look into it though. Moving on from dump day to the Tritown Trails update and RFP. Okay, so um, I had a meeting with um, the Tritown Trail Committee, which um, is West Rutland, Proctor, and Pittsburgh. And we met with the state and um, Stephanie Bork. So we got on board with that. So what we're the process right now is they need to do a design um, of the possibility of where the um, bike paths can be. So they've done an assessment and stuff, but the design consultant will actually see if there's roads connecting all the towns and what the safest and best routes are and come up with something. So the decision was that they were gonna try to make it not so broad to make it more work for them that they could kind of hone in on more of the central areas. And we talked about different paths, you know, like Route 3, talked about Gorm Bridge, West Proctor Road, um, even Whipple Hollow Road and things like that. So um, now we have consultants that they've given to us who are already top rated, so we don't have to go through the rating system. And the three towns are reviewing those right now and we're sending in our top three choices. And then from that, we'll choose one. Okay. And then they'll start. And Proctor was, um, we are the grant holder. We're the ones who initiated it. So all the invoicing and all the work is on us well i mean <laughs> so um when we get the funds and then um the for the payment of it we're all splitting in a third of that cost pittsburgh west Rutland property okay any questions so i will update you once we pick a consultant but are there any questions any questions mm -hmm. about that okay any other business if there's none, do I hear a motion to move uh, to recess the select board meeting and uh, convene the board of water commissioners? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, Zion Growers equivalent user rate. Hi, Travis. Good, how are you? Oh, I'm bad. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just obviously going to follow up on the last meeting. Um, met with Albert and I uh, wanted to see what came of our meeting and the calculations that were taken from that. When I was thinking about what I was going to be looking at, you know, I had some ideas what I'd be looking for and then I thought, well, I better start and see what the ordinance says, you know, for the town. And the ordinance you know, is the public drinking water system rules and regulations. And I thought by reviewing that, it might give me some guidance in addition to what I was thinking I would be looking at. I know from the information that Travis gave me, there was, of course, the Zion, the property owner, and they had seven tenants. And so I wanted that guidance for what to look for. And, and I'm gonna just mention that uh, the current drinking water system rules and regulations were adopted on July 10, 2006, and they went into effect on September 8, 2006. So this is a document that uh, we adhere to. 
And prior to this, they had a system, and that system was to calculate usage, and there were some tools that they used uh, to help them with those calculations. And you're gonna see that when we get to the point where we have to look at overages, that we use those tools that were in that toolbox. And that was the system that was in existence prior to this date. But uh, as of the, this date, you know, this is the, the guidance for us as far as, you know, our, our rates and fees that we charge. And I just want to just couple of, cover a couple of items. One is in the definition, it defines what a rate payer is. And, and a rate payer means the property owner, comma, user or occupant of any tenement, comma, house or building who takes the water of the town. And when I get to, you know, the fees, that rate payer is going to come up because that's uh, who they're calling out. And it's the property owner, the user, occupant of any tenement, house or building. And all they have to do is take water of the town and then they they meet the criteria for being a rate payer. And then when you go to Article 3, Applications, Permits, and Fees, Section 5 says, water use and proctor is not metered. And then rate payers are billed a base rate, and that's an important part of that sentence in that rate payers are billed the base rate plus extra fees for additional facilities and equipment. And then the schedule of rates and fees is available at the town office. And so uh, when you go to the, the schedule of rates and fees, uh, it tells you uh, everything is based on an equivalent user. An equivalent user is a standard that's used pretty much for municipalities that don't have metered water systems, but it's for ordinary single family dwelling, uh, their water usage. And that's called the equivalent user or EU. And the EU in practice, because we don't monitor how much water is used, uh, you think that, well, we don't have a number associated with what one EU represents. But in the old toolbox that when they used to calculate flow, they used to say one, at that time it was called equivalent residential unit, that was 450 gallons. And that is kind of also the standard that is used with an EU. So when we're talking overages, the, the usage that we will be looking at is if they're over 450 gallons a day. That's where we may have to get into like the uh, uh, document or our ordinance said that uh, we bill for extra fees or we bill extra fees for additional facilities and equipment and uh, that's what we'll be looking at. Anything over 450 gallons a day. And so again, uh, Travis was very nice. He took me wherever I wanted to go into the building. He answered all my questions. And so uh, I'm not going to take them in any order because we kind of went around uh, what was nearest us at the time. But uh, uh, the tour was on 831.23, and it was uh, Travis and myself. And the first stop would be, you know, a spot occupied by. Uh, Zion uh, Industries and uh, Industrial, you know, and a corporation, and and at the at the present time, they had no employees in the building, they had uh, no equipment and no supplies in the building, and so as far as uh, uh, meeting criteria as a ratepayer, well, from that you would say, well, they are not meeting the criteria as a ratepayer. But uh, through f further touring, uh, we came upon the sprinkler room. And in that sprinkler room, there are two 2,500 gallon tanks for water storage for the sprinkler. And uh, they were filled, and the, the sprinkler system is charged and activated. So 
by that, you know, I think they meet the criteria of they are taking water from, you know, Proctor, and so, so that system is charged. So they, based on the fact they meet the criteria as a ratepayer, and, and in that ordinance it said every ratepayer is charged a base rate, well they should be charged one uh, CU for that. So uh, Zion, I, see, I feel, should be, to start with, uh, the one EU for the base unit, and then if they, when they do come in, bring on additional staff, bring in equipment, you know, we'll have to take a second look to see if there's any need for the over and above fees. But at the present time, I just think it's just the base rate. Everybody is charged the base rate. Uh, that meets the quality criteria of being a, uh, a rate payer, gets charged at one EU. So, so that was it with the, the Zion portion of it. Then we went up to the Marble Museum. The Marble Museum has bathrooms and they have staff. And, and I didn't concern myself too much as, with the number of visitors the exhibit was having at the present time, nor did I concern myself too much with the number of staff each one of the tenants had at the present time because Travis gave us you know, that number in one of his uh, letters, you know, seven tenants and eight employees. So I'm just going with that number, you know. So, so the Marble exhibit, you know, they, they, they are open, they do have, they are using Proctor water. So again, they meet the criteria of a rate payer. So again, the Marble exhibit should start with that base rate that everybody gets of one EU. So the marble exhibit should get one EU. And then, as far as using that tool that's in the old toolbox about calculating uh, over usage or over edges for the water, you know, that's where we would go to that. And in that, it says that, you know, for, for business like that, it would be $5 per, or not $5, but five gallon per visitor. Well, they would have to have, uh, uh, 84 visitors in order to meet 450 gallons because the base unit comes with 450 gallons. So they would only be billed for anything that might be over and above 450 gallons. And at the time of Travis's letter, they had two full-time employees, which had been 30 gallons, you know, nine visitors, 45. So they don't even come close to getting over the 450 gallons per day, which comes with one EU. So I say the marble exhibit is just one EU. And in, in the future, you know, that's something that we would have to look into yeah, to see if they have gone over those 84 visitors per day or that 450 gallon. But as of the date of the visit, they're just one EU. And, and, uh, they're, they're, and, and that's another thing I just want to bring up. When you look at our uh, ordinance, uh, it says what we do, and I think we really should do what we say we do. They, 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 in the definition, they define what's the residential, what's the commercial, and what's the industrial. You know, Zion is industrial. Uh, the Marble Museum is commercial. Uh, Marble, Procter Marble is, you know, industrial. You know, we might want in the future, you know, on that uh, 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 second sheet of the fees and the schedule of fees and rates, you know, it's all listed as commercial, you know, which is fine. It lists businesses, but we probably should list them as commercial and industrial because, you know, that's what our uh, uh, ordinance says we do. So, so we may want to do that. And uh, Zion, I, of course, <coughs> categorize those as uh, industrial. Uh, uh, Marble Museum is uh, commercial. And then an industri another industrial tenant is uh, Michael Knowles Carpentry. Now, Michael Knowles Carpentry, it's, it's got its own section in the building. It doesn't have any on, in his section, uh, uh, bathroom facilities or even any uh, 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 lavatories. So 
he has access. It comes with that rental, and I, it's probably, I don't know if he has a lease, but bathroom access uh, does come to a bathroom that's in a communal area. You know, so, so they do have access to that, and they do, there is in another communal area, a tub sink uh, that uh, he has access to. So, you know, again, the criteria saying, you know, do they have, do they occupy the building? Yes. Do they have access to proctor or water? Yes, they do, you know, but it's a communal area. So it meets the criteria. So I said, you know, it's an industrial user. So, so again, I says, well, he qualifies for one base unit because on the, any other categories, if it's, if it's the uh, residential and uh, uh, you meet the criteria of being a, a, a dwelling unit, you're charged one base unit. And I think that this is a case, well, you know, it's a uh, commercial, uh, or not a commercial, but it's industrial business, so they should be charged, you know, the one uh, EU. And then there are four tenants that all they do is use the premise for storage. Now, uh, they have no full-time employees, they have no equipment or property connected in any way to any uh, water source, you know, in, in the building. So as far as I see it, they do not meet the criteria of uh, a rate payer. So I don't think for any of those that are just people occupying, or business, or just material just occupying floor space, they, they, they shouldn't be charged a base rate. And then the seventh and final tenant is uh, Proctor Marble. And in there, they do have their own bathroom. And just from that alone, uh, they meet the criteria of being uh, uh, a rate payer. So they should at least be charged one EU. And then also, this is where we get into the overage, and they do have uh, one uh, lane uh, circular saw for you know sawing marble, and uh, it, it was it's it's Vermont made, and the owner of the business told me that you know the company has gone out of business, and I thought I would be able to go online research and look for the, the machine specs just to see uh, how much water it uses. But uh, that was a lesson in futility. You know, I spent, I could find information on the manufacturer. They had a page, web page, and in there, it was just what people wanted to offer about, uh, you know, their experiences and what machines they have. But there wasn't anything where I could look up a machine and see what its use was. So again, then the second option was, well, you know, stone cutting happens a lot in this country and around the world. So I just started web surfing looking for uh, places that could possibly give me numbers. At the time of my visit, you know, the machine wasn't uh, uh, running, so I really couldn't see. Uh, I, I, I could go back, measure the diameter of the piping, see what the water pressure is there, and try and, you know, that way do some calculations, but, you know, I wasn't going to do that. And so I did go to uh, Stone World, and they're talking, you know, uh, the average for a 24-inch uh, circular saw cutting marble is four gallons per minute. That's the average. And I think theirs was at least 24 inches. I didn't measure it, but I think it was probably in the, in the 30, 36. So it would probably be used more. But I'm going to go with the average for a 24 inch is 4 gallons a minute, 240 gallons an hour, you know, uh, uh, 1,920 gallons a day. You know, if you were to divide that by 450, that's 4.3 EUs. But the only thing is, uh, 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 I think we want to listen to, you know, who's in the business and their usage. They don't run that eight hours a day, five days a week. You know, they, 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 
and, and again, in, in the discussion that uh, Travers had, and then he had some discussion with uh, another business in town that is in the marble business, uh, he felt it was 15 to 20 percent of what they use is what you know his tenant uses. But I'm just looking at this, you know, thinking about it's it's a one person full time uh, job. Now with that, because it's uh, uh, it's not manually cranked the the the, the saw. It's automatic feed, so you could turn it on, go do something else, you know. So, so one person can do more than one operation in the building, and there are, you know, others that come in that do help, you know. How many? How long? I don't know. But, but, but. Uh, so when I was looking at it, I says, well, you know, there's a 40-hour work week, and I'm just going to say that, you know, listen to what he had to say. 12 hours. I'm going to say is probably you know a, a, a fair uh, a, a use of that you know at 12 hours you know at uh, which is 2.4 hours a day at uh, you know 240 gallons you know an hour that was 576 gallons a day you know for that 12 hours and then he also that was one wet station that uses water then there was a second wet station that uses water and that's where all the hand labor is done and he had five or seven different uh, hand tools from abrasive to polishing to diamond uh, uh, circular saws and again you know he showed me you know they're all valved uh, they're connected with a supply line, a half inch line that can deliver five to six gallons a minute, you know. But they're all gated, and he kind of tried to show me on one how it's gated way down. But with the diamond, while well, you got to cool, you got to flush, well, that one's, you know, not going to be gated down too much. So, so again, trying to look at what's out there for handheld marble or stone working tools. Again, it, there's a there's a large range, you know, from liters a minute to you know gallons a minute, and and so uh, again, I, I went on the low end. I'm just going to say he was his tools probably use you know one gallon a minute, you know, for 60 gallons an hour while they're using the hand tools, and again, not he's not spending all his time all day using those hand tools. Uh, so to, to begin with, you have to allow a person 30 minutes for a lunch break. You have to allow them two 15 minutes breaks for, you know, morning and afternoon. So, so I'm saying the, the labor, the, the manual labor day is only seven hours long to begin with. But, but with, with 2.4 hours being used on uh, the, 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 the saw, and answering the phone and doing other things. So I said, well, I'm going to go with 5.6 hours a day. You know, times five is 30 hours a week doing his manual labor. Is, is that right? Uh, 5.6 times five. Yeah, 28 hours. Yeah, 28 hours. You know, so that's what I'm going. I'm saying he's doing 28 hours of manual labor. That equates to, you know, uh, uh, the 5.6 hours times 60 uh, gives me 336 gallons per day. So when I total everything, the 576, the 336, that's 912 gallons he's using a day, you know, through his operation. And I said he was a rate payer, and a rate payer automatically qualifies for 450, or 450 gallons comes with that, you know. So I take from 950, uh, uh, or, or 450 from the 912, that leaves uh, 462 gallons. This is overage, so one more EU, you know. So, so the way I see it, you know, there's four base that just because they meet the criteria of being a rate payer, and then there's one EU for overage. So at the time, you know, when it was 10, I think I can see how they came up with the 10, 
and I think, you know, when you reduced it to five, I think that's a good number, you know, from what I saw and from what, you know, calculations and what I've seen here. But these calculations and, you know, how I applied them, that's only me speaking, and I'm only one of five. You know, everybody here, you know, is certainly going to come up with their own interpretation and I, well, I won't say interpretation, but their own understanding of reading the ordinance and how to apply, you know, the, the verbiage that's in that ordinance. And I was just speaking how I was applying it and I saw uh, how that uh, verbiage should be applied. But everybody here is going to have to decide as far as, you know, that ordinance and how we apply it. and and. And two, you know, when we're talking about, you know, that list that, that shows the uh, residential, all residentials are charged one EU. That's the base rate, you know. And then uh, the, it lists the commercial users and it lists some of the commercial users. Why Karis Rios isn't on here, I don't know. Why? you know, Procter Gas or Keyser Energy are on here, I don't know, but that's something in the future, the next time we bring this up, we might want to, you know, this is only a partial list, we may want to try and, you know, complete or add some of the others on that list. And when you look at, uh, when you're thinking about, you know, the rate payer, you know, and, and if you meet the criteria that was defined in that the definition, you're charged one EU, and, and you look at Kinsella Construction next door. Now, what do they have there? Maybe three people? You know, if, if you, and, and when you look at their current fee, they're being charged one EU. If you look at the tool that's in our old toolkit, that we use for overages, it says, you know, for full-time employees working an eight-hour shift, you charge them 15 gallons a day per employee. So that would mean if they had three employees working full-time, all they would have to pay for is 45 gallons, you know. But with the new ordinance, uh, it says, wait, you meet the criteria of rate payer, you're, you're, you know, you're the occupant or owner of that building, you're going to be charged one base rate, and that is one EU. So, so that's why they may only have three employees over there, but they're being charged one EU. And that's the same thing with Anya, the geology lab up there. They may have four full-time people up there. But again, they're being charged, you know, one EU. So Anybody I think I've said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you very much, Al. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Al? Thanks. So what is the total you came to? Five. Five use? Yes. So that's one for the sprinkler system or Zion, one for the Marble Museum, one for Mike Knowles, and two for Proctor Marble, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the two uh, for Proctor Marble, one is the base one, mm -hmm. you know, which came with 450. Mm -hmm. And I thought his usage there was 920 gallons, uh, 912 gallons a day, Travers. You know, and the, the, B, the, A, the, the, the base rate says you get 450 with it. So for that understanding that, to understand, the, uh, what, what was your calculation for how long you would have to use that per day for to make that work? Uh, 2.4 2 hours on... 2.4 hours yes. on the saw per day. Okay. Yeah, on the saw per day. And then it was 5.6 yeah. hours... Or 5.8, 5.8, so I try to... I think I was saying, well, I'm going to make it an 8 hour. 5.8 for the hand saw, 2.6 for the large saw. 2.4 for the large saw. 2.4 for the large saw. Yeah, and 5.8 for the hand tools. Are these people, are these tenants responsible for their own water bill payment?
issue with this, and this is after walking through there before, and understanding that there's an industrial piece to this, we're an industrial building, which from my understanding would cover the, as a building, we are an industrial building. That's the one EU. The fact that an additional tenant that doesn't use any sort of water in the building is also being charged an additional EU of 450 gallons seems a little odd because the only facility that they have access to is a public which is one bathroom and one sink. That's it. So to say that that person just as being a tenant in a building under the term industrial is also being charged a whole unit seems odd. With that said, in addition to that, the tank system, you have two 2,500-gallon tanks and one bathroom. That would cover essentially all the water used by Zion and any of their tenants. How that comes to more than 2,200 per week, which would technically be the usage you would have to get to per week to reach that, um, seems a little odd. Now, I understand that we need to be charged as an industrial site, as industrial tenants, and I have no problem with that. The sprinkler system being one EU, that's fine. I believe it would make sense if the bathroom was included in that, as those are things that are filled one time, and most of these charges are talking about a per day usage. So to fill both of those tanks, we would have to use, we fill them once a year, maybe. So eat that EU. I feel like that for the bathroom should be included because the bathroom is used by one tenant, Mike Knowles. Where that additional EU comes in from, I, I just, I can't understand how that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I, I, I get what you're saying, and I'm not going to fight you on the usage per day, but I think after talking to Proctor Marble Clo, the, he is one person that works there, his wife assists him, he does all the cutting and restoration on his own. I mean, very clear he uses that saw nearly never. He is one man, he had one assistant there the day we were visiting, that man owns his own business in upstate New York. He does mostly restoration, which is in pieces that do not require brand new cutting. It's restoration, it's fixing of older pieces that come into the building. So to say that he's using 926 gallons per day, I, I, don't, I don't see how that's humanly possible for him to do, based on the conversation that you had with him. Regardless of what it is capable of using and what the actuality of the situation is. If you want to extrapolate upon that, I understand. To charge me an entire EU for someone who literally does not use any water as an industrial tenant of a building that you're already labeling as industrial, so you're doubling down on the industrial title, seems superfluous. Because as you were well known, he does not have a bathroom, he does not have a sink, he does not have a faucet or a, or a hose to the best of what we went through in that building. So that means you're charging me 450 gallons for a person who doesn't have a facility of their own. Let me just, just say, you know, the only reason I brought the 450 gallons in mm -hmm. is when we're doing calculations for the overage. No, I understand. But you know, and, and it does say, you know, uh, on the fees, section five, that water use in Proctor is not metered. So that base is not for... So uh, I guess my question is why is he as a tenant being singled out as someone who doesn't actually have his own water as a singular tenant? Uh, he's, if he has to go to the bathroom, he's going to, and it probably, I don't know what the lease may, the verbiage in the lease may be, but I'm gonna rent you this for your industrial business. I'm gonna rent you this building. Uh, well, wait a minute, there's no bathroom. Yes, the bathroom that comes with this building is over there. Mm -hmm. So that person has use or is using uh, the water of Proctor. So and that's all a ratepayer is. If you 
And then I'm just going to go back to that. Oh, I understand that. So you're saying that as the owner of the building, I am responsible for the two 2,500 gallon tanks, which gets filled once a year, as well as having an additional tenant that uses one tenant, mind you, that uses the bathroom as well. So I'm being charged 450 gallons per day, which is one EU. No, roughly. no. So that you're not being charged. So I, I guess EU has no number associated with it. So I'm trying. So I guess I'm trying to understand how those are considered different facilities. Because we're talking about the sprinkler system, and then you're talking about a single bathroom, and those are somehow charged the same. A sprinkler system that's filled once and then. It's just stays filled. Again, it meets what's the rate payer. Building right. owner that, again. But how is that not cycled in with the bathroom as we're being built on the same, that's all. That bathroom is going to, you know, one of your tenants, you're, you're, you're saying that. That's so is the sprinkler system. Well, then again, there again, there's another reason that he should, he's a tenant. There's the sprinkler system in his building. If that's yes. in his building, he has use of the proctor water he should be built for. Which is included. That, but that's on me. But that's that's, that's on not me. him. That's me. He's my tenant. That's my building. Yes. So it's not him using it separately. You're already building me for that. You can't build me and him separately. When he's my tenant, you're already building me for the water that's being used. That doesn't make any sense. I, I don't understand. You're saying that I'm not coming to you. He's his own user, but I'm my own user, but he's my tenant. Now you're saying we shouldn't bill Proctor Marble? No, I'm saying you're trying to bill him for using a public bathroom in a building that he rents space from me. How, how while at is, the same time asking to bill me for the storage of a tank separately as the same building owner. But how is Proctor Marble? Mm -hmm. You're not contesting, you know, that the fact that they get the one EU, they have yeah. their bathroom in their own. You're saying if that bathroom was in his shop, yes, you would be happy with it. Yeah, because it would be a private bathroom designated to him. Okay, it would be so wait, I'm getting confused to who to Mike Knowles oh, had a bathroom. Oh, to Mike Knowles. Yeah, okay. Okay. you know, he has, has their own bathroom. Right. Yeah. Right. Private facility, sink, toilet. Mike Knowles has none of that. Right. He doesn't have a sink, he doesn't have a bathroom. There's one bathroom in the front of the cafe. Right, but he does have access. He has access yes. to that. Right. So that makes him an equivalent user. By our ordinance, it makes him an equivalent user. Yes, by this ordinance. Mm. It's no different than, okay, all the bathrooms upstairs in the museum. You don't get a credit for the whole, the, uh, the whole time they're shut off in the cold weather. You're still billed yearly for the... I understand that. It just seems like that is playing with the ordinance in, in my eyes because you're... I'm trying to understand this because I'm owning a building in town that I'm already being billed for the water for. Fine. That's one of you. I'm an equivalent user. How that doesn't cover one bathroom and those two tanks is what I don't understand. I, Be I, because our ordinance defines if someone has access to it, they become an equivalent user. We're going by the definition in our ordinance. But I have access to it, it's my bathroom, so should I just tell him, so So if I tell him he's not allowed to use it anymore, does that get rid of it? Does that solve my problem? That would be your decision. Okay, so I'm gonna sit here and tell you that he is no longer has access to that, that bathroom. And he's a tenant? Yeah, he doesn't have a bathroom I'd access. I'd like to see him mm -hmm. first sign that new lease yeah. on that. That's fine, um, uh, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. So, um, I think we need to move on. I think we've discussed this, so. Well, I'd like to thank you all for your time. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't see how this makes sense. Um, we will be in touch. Thank you. Okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Delinquent accounts and shutoffs. So, we have two shutoffs that are being done hopefully this week. Um, there were three others that um, have made some arrangements and payments that kind of backed up to the other one. Some have issues because they are tenant um, occupied. The owner doesn't live there, but tenants do. So we're running into that situation. Um, what difference does that make, Judy? Because the state wasn't allowing us to shut water off when people were living there. Uh, we ran into that on Kane Street. 
Okay. What what other avenues do we have? That? Well, I think we. I'm sending letters to the owner, um, but I also think that we need to um, check with the state to see if there's any way around that because. Why don't we check with our lawyer? Okay. Well, he was involved in the other one too, so. Well, that, that really ties our hands. If, uh, well, it definitely ties our hands, but we've run into it a lot because a lot of property in Proctor's rental. I don't remember Michael mentioning this. Huh? I don't remember Michael mentioning this. Oh. There yeah. were a few. Mm -hmm. I think what, what ends up happening is the tenant calls the state and says, my landlord isn't paying the water, and the state orders us to put it back on. I know that's happened at least three or four times. Okay. But. It might make sense. Michael set up the three rooms with tenants, and our yeah. lawyer told us not to do that. Yeah. That that was a bad policy, and so we stopped doing that. I'm wondering if the league could help us out with this. I can check we, it out. We can't be the only town that's going through right. this. Right. Right. Now, what does the city do? Um, I don't, certainly got houses with. Uh, right. With tenants. Um, I don't think they shut them off either with tenants in them, especially if there's, if there's children in there. But I, we've always been from there too advised from the state that you know you should you, the utility should never be put in the tenant's name because there's no way to get it once they move. Right. We'll see. But I'll check into those, and then the other two should be. Okay, perfect. There's a big section in the ordinance covering water shutoffs, <laughs> and it talks about tenants and why the property owners get the bills and not the tenants. And there's a protocol for, you know, going through the shutoffs. So if we could check with the league and if we need to with the lawyer and mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Is there any other business for water commissioners? If not, can I have a motion to adjourn the board of water commissioners and convene the board of sewage commissioners? commissioners? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, anything for sewer commission? Anything for sewer? How are we coming along with our uh, engineers and replacing our liners? And um, well, right now we're doing a, um, like that water infrastructure, we had that loan to do the planning feasibility study on that. So that's, we're working on them with that and their actual, their final report should be due to us or try to finalize that and there's one thing actually I needed um, to fill out so I've got to deal with them to fill it out because it's all about water capacity and things like that but as far as the lining piece of it they haven't been back in touch with me at all since I've been here okay let's rattle their cage yeah thank you and I'll be talking to them this week anyway on something else so okay <clears throat> if there's nothing else for sewer commissioners is there a motion to adjourn the Board of Sewer Commissioners and reconvene the regular select board meeting? So moved. So second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, departmental reports. Everybody take a look at the Sheriff's report. Any questions or comments about that? A few fines. Yeah. $921. This hot weather brings up. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make one comment then. Yes. Uh, it says, you know, uh, uh, stationary patrol, uh, West Street radar, and then in parentheses it says 20 mile an hour speed zone due to recent speed complaints. It's nice to see that, you know, when somebody brings something to the attention that it gets down to the patrol officer and uh, they acknowledge that they're addressing you know that concern that was brought you know to the town i agree and I, I saw that too all right town manager's report and i did give you the um highway report i got that this morning so i did add it if, i don't know if you guys have any questions on it or concerns there's some side notes too so we went over it this morning And we are doing the last week of September um, hydrant flushing. So if anybody asks, it is on the website and posted. So. Good. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. 
All right, so um, we lower the flags today for um, Patriots Day as well as 9-11, so hopefully everyone noticed that. The stormwater master planning is what I mentioned about the September 28th meeting. So um, Watershed Consulting and the Rutland Natural Resource Conservation District will both be at the meeting to answer any questions regarding that. Um, so stay tuned. <laughs> um, water was shut off at 48 West Street. Um, the owner gave us his approval to do so. Um, there was complaints about water being in the backyard. We don't know if that was the issue or not. Um, but we did close it off because the property's abandoned. Nobody's living there. So there was no need to have it on. So, so they went and shut that up. Um, and then I mentioned the two properties um, that we have to shut off on Green Square. And the highway, they've been finishing up the side of West Street paving, so they're pretty much done with that. Um, we did have one um, complaint on West Street that um, kept complaining. <laughs> And Wilk did finally go out last week and repaired it to his satisfaction and cleaned up and he even called me and, and thanked us for having him, them go out there. So he, he was happy after that. Um, I am submitting, I just got the check today from um, Celia. So we are submitting the request for reimbursement of the $200,000 for the class two highway grant. So they did that. Um, and you then- You were going to check on uh, center line striping. Yes, I called the state about that uh, Department of Transportation, and he put it on the um, agenda so that someone would come over there and, and paint it. But they're in charge of that. So, yeah. what was the total amount on the uh, West Street? Um, let's see, it's three hundred and forty-nine. I have it broken down. So we're paying two hundred. We're getting a state grant for sixty-five hundred, and so the town is due seventy-four six thirty-nine fifty-seven. So. 74, 69. I'm just adding it up to you, so. <laughs> well, it's good we're getting some extra money. Yeah. That's 65 from the yep. state. Yep. Three, that's not right. Three hundred. Oh, okay. So three forty nine six thirty nine. Yep. And then um, the water asset management plan and workshop. Um, Public Works and myself are actually attending a one day shop workshop um, for clean clean water. So it's basically a workshop that's three days, but one day a month. So it's September, October, November. That. In Rutland or? And unfortunately, it's in Bennington. Bennington. Well, Bennington or, um, what was it, Mil Milton, I think. Bennington's a better choice. I know. <laughs> so I did email him and told him that we were interested. And I said, do you ever come to Central Vermont for anything and hold workshops? And he said, we rotate. So. Yeah. <laughs> but so no. <laughs> we run into that all the time. They never do anything down here. Um, so transfer station received an email back from the state to review the certification and make any changes. Um, and then they will submit it to the Agency of Natural Resources um, and Department of Environmental, Environmental Conservation. So, and I also got a form from, um, for the Rutland County Solid Waste um, for, not for that, for the Planning Commission. I just got that today. A form that we have to fill out for, because um, Michael's left. So um, they asked me if I wanted to be on it or somebody else. So I think Carrie's on it right now. So they gave me the thing so we can talk about that, about appointing. But they have to be appointed by the board. So, and we have to have at least one member. So from here. Um, let's see, um, I went out for quotes for both, um, well, salt and sand. I'm waiting to hear back from um, sand. And I still haven't gotten, I've only gotten one back. Um, the other one's supposed to get back to me tomorrow, but they, they called me. Um, and then we're going out to bid for fuel. So that's going out too. Um, in September, coming up with meetings, I'm meeting tomorrow with someone from um, 
emergency management. They just kind of want to go over things after the storm to see how we are settled in, if there's anything we need, what's going on, what's the status of everything, just as an update. So he's coming down at 3.30 or 4. Um, I mentioned the Tritown Trails. Um, I met with Zion um, today as well. Um, I did a tour over there at the Marble Museum. So he brought me out through the building, showed me everything that's going on and what's going on, and um, has great vision on if he wins the lottery, hopefully he said that would be a fantastic because there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of parts that are really actually in good shape and, and pretty decent. It's mostly the far end mm. part of the mill, you know, where all the garage was there and stuff. And he's also had to board up because um, kids are breaking into that part of the building, so. Yeah, pour that up. So, and then um, the town fair. So I'm going to asset management next Wednesday, and then the town fair is next Tuesday and Wednesday. And I spoke with Ben about the board meeting because we have a board meeting Monday, and I was actually planning on going up because I'm on the passive board of going up Monday. So if I have to, I'll participate by phone or by Zoom. And that's it. Okay. Any questions about the town manager's report? Anything else before we move into executive session? If not, can I have a motion to find the premature general knowledge regarding the town's potential action of a residential tax assessment appeal would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its negotiation strategy if it discusses the appeal in public. Do I need a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 So then at this point, can I have a motion to enter into executive session to discuss the town's action to the appeal and legal representation under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1A of the Vermont Statutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're in executive session.